name is Maureen Yawera Njogu. I'm an interior designer. I'm also the founder and CEO of Intimate Gifts Kenya, which is a one-stop shop for all your gifting needs. Um, so I was born in Nakuru. I actually lived in Nakuru for the first three years of my life. When I was three years old, we moved to Nairobi. My dad got a job in media. I'm the first born in a family of three children. I have a younger sister who's 16 years. Her name is Faith. Um, I have a small brother who's five years old. So I like to say he's my small firstborn because I, I basically take care of him. So for me, I vividly remember my first three years, I was actually brought up in Nakuru. And I'll never forget that I didn't know Kiswahili, I didn't know English, I used to talk in Kikuyu throughout. So my first three years were fun. I was like my grandmother's last born. We were very close, to date we are. So my siblings were born when we moved to Nairobi. My sister was born when I was in class three. And as you can guess, my brother was born when I was in university first year. I was actually 20 years or 21 years. For me growing up, I grew up in a typical African home. Um, my dad was in media, my mom was in business. So I'd watch them do the things they do on a daily and I would admire them. Based on my dad's background, that's why I actually started a YouTube channel when I was in university because I wanted to follow in his footsteps until, you know, school happened. And for my mom, watching her since I was a kid to now, as you can see, I did follow in her footsteps eventually because I started doing business that I'm still doing to date. Um, I was a very disciplined child, that, that I can say for a fact because my parents were never called to come to school. I was never chased away from school. I could also say I was their trouble child because when they were starting life, they started with me. I watched my mom work from the ground until where she is now. I've watched my dad. I've watched my mom hook. I've watched my dad hook. So it's, I think using their lives, I've used their lives to actually get the steps I need and they gave me a head start, which I'm very grateful for, because right now my mom uses her life to teach me which steps I should take, which ones I shouldn't take, and I'm very grateful for that. For my siblings, I have a sister, I have a brother. As you can see, my small brother is just five years old, actually four years old. So I'm like a young mom. Like everywhere I go, I actually say that's my son, because I take care of him, and we have a good, good relationship with him. For primary, I went to Aga Khan Primary School until class four. When I reached class four, my parents decided now, it's time to go to boarding school. So when I was in class five, I was moved to a boarding school in Nyahururu, a very cold town, by the way. So I studied there until class eight. Boarding school was not bad for me. I actually kind of enjoyed it. When I was there at that time, I didn't enjoy it, obviously. But now when I think of the memories, one of the best memories of my life. So um, I studied there until class eight. When I got to class eight, I performed well and got admission into Moy High School Kabarak. That is where I studied from form one to form four. Clearly, I was very disciplined because I didn't used to change schools. Kwenye Nanza and Yona Malaysia. I was able to get an A and was admitted into Nairobi University where I went to study interior design. That's why I said I was, I'm an interior designer by profession. I did interior design and while I was still in university, I also decided to get into media. I had a YouTube channel where I would interview people and it was doing well, but it just gets to a point. I think life happens, school happens, and I just had to choose between school and the YouTube and I had to choose school, obviously. Um, I graduated in 2020 and when I finished school, when I was still in university actually, I got an internship with the KDF, Kenya Defense Forces. They were building a, their first rehabilitation in Kenya 
and it was an experience I will always carry with me for the rest of my life because I got to meet prominent people who mentored me, taught me so much and I really loved it. I really gained a lot from it and I would say I got most of my interior design background from there and I thank God I was able to graduate come fourth year in 2020 and it was good I graduated but now nobody prepares you for life after you graduate. You know, Mnaskianga too, like, eh, people tarmac, people look for jobs, but I did. You know, when you're studying, it's all about, eh, when we finish school, we'll get jobs, you'll become a big CEO, but when you get out here is when you realize there are no jobs in Kenya, because I remember after I finished my fourth year, I did look for jobs, I sent CVs, I went for interviews, but most companies apparently they want experience and you've just finished school so you do not have the experience but i did have the experience for kdf but of course they needed more so um after that i found myself working with my mom and i'd say that was what actually made me to start my business because it was nice going it, going with her to work she's also a business lady and i will see her work i will see how she runs her business and that really motivated me and i realized you know what I also want to start something of my own and actually I didn't have an idea for my business until one day it was a friend's birthday and most of my friends were working so they were busy so because I was working with my mom it was easier for me to organize the birthday and get the gifts. So on that day my I went to look for the gifts, I put the gift up together and I went to surprise the friend. But when I was gifting, everybody was like, eh, where did you get this gift? How did you put this together? Where did you get this idea? So it was like a light bulb for me. I realized, you know what, I could actually do this as a career. I could actually, because I realized many people want to make their loved ones feel special. They want to gift their loved ones, their colleagues, but they don't have the time because they're either working, traveling or doing something. And I, 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 when I noticed that, gap i decided maybe i could assist people and they could start the business from there after my friend's birthday i decided to actually put the idea into action because you know you can sit there all day and complain that oh there are no jobs in kenya there are no what there are no what but if you feel like there's something that's not right in your life i feel like you're the, one, you're the only one who can take action and actually do what you're supposed to do, change what you need to change in your life. And for me, I decided to take the leap of faith and start the business. So I remember I started by first opening a page on Instagram. And I won't say it was easy, because you know when you're starting a page, you have like two followers or three followers, and you're trying to sell a product to people. And let's remember, it's a product that many people are not used to somebody selling. Like, you're over here, you're saying, I'm selling gifts, you know. So at first it was it was very challenging to actually try convince people like, this is what we do, this is what I'm about. But you know, everything is just about pushing yourself. I first started by just posting some of the products I had. I remember the first products I posted were not even for a client. I just made I just made packages, posted them, even the personalized things. If you go down to my page, you'll see it was like a mug written my name, Maureen. You'll see a notebook written my name, Maureen. So it was just faith. It was all about faith. So um, it just started. Um, I didn't expect it, but this was actually something that people embraced and people needed. I remember when I got my first order, I was even shocked because I was actually shocked because, you know, sometimes you want to believe in yourself, but I think you need someone to actually believe in you for you to believe in yourself. So I remember when I got that first order is when I realized, you know what, I could actually do this. I could actually make a living out of it. And so I started slowly, my page started picking, people started embracing my idea, people started buying from me. And I was very grateful for that. To now, I'm still, you know, there's still the issue of online. Many people tend to not trust online vendors or a business that's 100% online. You see there's this thing about online because you see at first, at first, when you tell people you're working online, what one, like people tend to think like, hey, this girl studied, she got an A, she's not like, there was that thing. But I'm so glad that 
my dreams, my vision actually came to life and I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm happy with it. An interior designer, I'm very passionate about how a home feels because the way your home looks represents how you are inside. And that's why I feel I'm very, very passionate about creating good homes for people, making people feel at home and making people feel comfortable when they are in their home to feel like you love your space, you love where you go back home to. And I am also very passionate about my business. There's nothing as fulfilling as when a client tells you, oh, my girlfriend loved the gift, my clients love the gift. I live for that, I live for the feedback. So I'd say those are the two things I'm very passionate about right now. When it comes to my purpose in life, I feel like everybody purposes to become better. You purpose to do better in life. You purpose to become the better version of yourself than you are right now. And I feel that's what I want in life. I don't, you know, you may say you want money. You, you can say you want to be successful, but there's more to it. It's about who you are as a person. It's about how you impact other people's lives. It's not about just you. So I feel like my purpose in life is actually to become a better version of myself each and every day because if I'm a better version of myself, I'll be able to be good to my clients, I'll be able to be good at work, I'll be able to be good to my parents, to everybody around me. And overall, I feel that's, my, that's actually my purpose. Some of the challenges I've experienced so far is creating a platform. Because you know, there's so much online, there's so much content that's consumed online. So you need to figure out how you're going to be different, how you're going to attract people to your page, how you're going to make a living out of it, how you're going to actually convince people that the product I'm selling to you is good, it's perfect, and it's going to make your loved one feel good. Because if you're going to sell things to people online, you have to have the people to sell to. So for, that has been very challenging, but I'm glad with, some with time you get to know the loops, what to do to get the audience, what you shouldn't do. So I'm still learning, I'm still trying, because I still want a bigger audience, more clients. So um, I'd say that's an issue. Another, another challenge I'd say is getting clients to believe you, to trust you, because you know, this is someone, most Kenyans are used to going to a shop and buying something, but I'm over here and mind you, I'm not selling the normal things people sell, I'm selling gifts. So I'm over here selling you a gift online. I'm not someone you've seen, I'm not someone you've met. So I feel like that's a challenge I've really, really experienced because most clients will be like, hey, where's your physical shop? Where are you? And I'm like, oh, we are based online. So that tends to be a very, very big challenge working online, but I'm glad Kenyans, as time goes, times are changing and people are becoming more open to shopping online. Many people actually have clients who will refer their friends, refer their people, and that's how I've actually managed to grow, get more clients, get people to trust me, buy my things. And if you're working online, I feel you need to make the clients trust you. You need to make the clients feel you're reliable. So for me, what I do is I ensure, because there are people, I understand there are people who actually post things and steal money from people online, hence the challenge. So for me, in order to be transparent with my clients, I always ensure whether I'm posting anything, a video or a photo, there's always a sticker a sticker I've put there, my company's name, my details and everything. So when anyone is watching my page, they'll be able to see that she actually made these things, she actually delivers these things. So I overcome that challenge by being close with my clients, being transparent and actually showing them I'm doing this and I'm delivering to other clients who are happy. Being a leader at my age, I'd say it's not quite easy, but it's also not hard. Anything you, are, you want to achieve, you can. The advice that I'd give to a young lady out there who wants to start something, who wants to do something for themselves, step up, do what you have to do. I know it's not easy maybe sometimes having to tell someone older than you, do this, you're not supposed to do this. But if you want to make your client happy, if you want to achieve something, I feel like you need to step up and believe in yourself it's very important for someone to have a mentor in their life because sometimes you may feel you're doing okay or you the steps you're taking are okay 
but you do need someone to guide you, hold your hand, take you to the places you need to go, lift you, encourage you. And that's why I'd advise any person out there, if, even if you're young, whether you're young or old, it's very important to have a mentor. For me, I really, really take the advice my mentors give me seriously. Sometimes your mentor won't be your best friend at all times because they'll tell you when you mess up, they'll tell you when you're not doing something right. I'm not going to lie, there are times I, I'd wake up, especially when I was starting out, there are times I'd wake up and you're like, eh, you're not getting the following you want, you're not getting views, you're not, because when you're working online, it's all about the analytics, the people viewing your page, the people liking your page, the people sharing your page. So there are times you'd see it's not adding up and I feel there are many times I felt like maybe I should give up, maybe I should let the dream go. And for me, my mentor held me, told me you need to take these steps, you need to do this, you need to be strong, believe in yourself, focus, don't give up. And that's the only reason I'm here today. So. For any person starting out anything, it's good to seek out a mentor, seek out someone who will guide you throughout the journey. And I'd advise you to get someone who's in the same space as you. When it comes to social media, social media can either make you or break you. So it's up to you to decide how you're going to use social media to help you in life. Because long ago, you know, Facebook was only used for people connecting with their friends, people, you know, meeting their high school friends. But Facebook is not the same Facebook it was even five years ago, even two years ago. It changes, it keeps changing gradually. 10 years ago, we didn't have influencers. But right now we have people who are millionaires by advertising other people's products. We have people who get jobs, who get opportunities, opportunities through the same social media. Like, for example, me, I live 100% off my business and yeah, it's, um, I'd really advise the youth to actually take action right now while we still have the opportunity. Some of the highlights of my life have been working with KDF. I've also been able to work for some corporate companies who come to me, trust me with their products. I've worked actually in the past two years, I've worked with so many corporates who would come to me, I'd make for them their diaries, their notebooks, their reflectors. and. I feel very honored to have such big companies trusting me with their jobs because there's a time I, I wasn't even getting an order. So seeing people in general, even my clients, even anyone that buys from me come to me and buy something from me, that is a highlight for me. Some of the lessons that I've learned so far in my career is one, how to handle pressure. If you're working online, you really, really need to know how to handle pressure like for example when it's valentine's day you can imagine the amount of pressure we experience because you have so many clients calling you like trying to know where their order is you still have to ensure that the people who are doing the packaging are packaging the clients order as well you also have to ensure that transportation is being taken care of well so i feel if you if you don't know how to handle pressure hey, it might be a little tricky so one i've I've learned you need to learn how to handle pressure. Two, time is important. Time is money. Because if a client wants something at around 2 p.m., you have to ensure that order gets that 2 p.m. Be it 7 a.m., it's up to you to wake up at 4 a.m., 3 a.m., go get the work done because time, time waits for no one. Three, understand your clients, understand their needs, understand what they want. And once you know what your client needs, what they love, what they don't love, what they embrace, it's easier for you to actually build a platform. It's easier for you to be able to sell what you're selling to them. And it's easier for you to actually be able to socialize with them, talk to them, be good to your clients. If I'm being honest, I wish I was told it's not easy because when I was starting, I thought it's just, eh, take the products, post them online, clients come. So. But with time, with time is when you realize it's not easy, but you at least learn how to maneuver through the highs, through the lows, through all the in-between. So I really wish somebody warned me that hey, Biashara is not for the week. If I knew that, at least maybe Ningengia na Rohongumu, but we are here now, so I'm still grateful.